Hi YouTube, I'm totally going to do this. I've tried one time before and I didn't have volume. So I'm trying again. Um, my name is Madi and I'm a Colorado knitter and this is going to be a knitting podcast. This is episode one, uh, September 2023 and we'll see how it goes. I have notes because I will get nervous and forget what I'm trying to say. Uh, so we'll try this, okay? Please bear with me. If you guys have any tips on how to record directly on um, YouTube, let me know. I tried and I didn't have any volume, uh, so I'm trying to record it on my iPad and then upload it to YouTube. Please comment below if you have any tips for me. Thanks. All right, so what I have is a notebook, so I'm going to tot totally be looking up and down. I'm going to try to look at the right spot on the iPad, but if I am looking cross-eyed, I apologize. Uh, so what I'm using is this maker's notebook. It might be backwards and my glasses are polarized, so they keep turning blue on you. Um, the maker's notebook is awesome. I saw it when they posted that they had gone to Fiberflock. I didn't get to go, but I followed them immediately and ordered a book and it's awesome. It's Tomoe River Paper um, and they have pages where you would enter project notes. Again, if it's backwards, I apologize. Um, but you can write notes, you can write uh, everything that you need to enter on to Ravelry. Sometimes I'm not very good at that, but I love a pencil and paper. So I wrote my notes here. So let's see, I already introduced myself. Again, my name is Madi. It's not terribly easy to say, but if you don't overthink it, it's uh, not too, too terrible. Um, I live in Colorado and I have three sons and a St. Bernard. So if I flip this camera around, you would see a disaster with shoes and laundry and dog hair and all the things. So this little corner might be the best spot for me because it's the cleanest corner. Don't check the windowsill, dusty. So what I'm going to start with is FOs, and I am a whip-tastic kind of person. If I see something I want to cast on, I just go for it. I don't care how many whips I have. I just love knitting, and I get excited to start a new project. Um, I have a zillion, a mountain of whips, and I am okay with that. But I did finish a few projects this summer, and so I'm going to show some summer tops. Since now we're in September and we're getting cooler weather, I wanted to show these off before I had to put them away for the season. So the first thing I'm going to show you is my... Nice, I already forgot what it's called. My mini mock neck. And my mini mock neck... Jessie made, I think. I'm terrible with designer's names, but she makes the cutest things and I know you guys know the mini mock. She is beautiful and an amazing designer and size inclusive and just stunning overall. So I did make this and I made it out of Emma's yarn, a Hella Hank. And I got the Hella Hank at U Knit here in Colorado Springs and it was um, it was a really fun knit. I actually copied or was inspired by Jackie of um, Caddy Jack's Knits and it was the best tip. I, I made a size medium and I ended up doing the cast on down here uh, with a few stitches less so that it would cover more of that armpit so my bra doesn't show, and it worked out really well. It's definitely snug as a medium, and I'm a 33 bust. Um, it's certainly snug through the top here, so much so that sometimes I feel like I can see through it, but I might have to match my bra to the top, and that might help a lot. So let me see if I have the tag here for you for Emma's yarn. She makes beautiful yarn. This is not the correct colorway, and I'll try to improve that in the future podcasts where I actually have the right color for you, but not this time. So this is Emma's yarn, the Hella Hank, and it's 600 yards, which is amazing. So you don't have to do any stranded color work uh, or it's not stranded, helical knitting so that it's all going to be the same tonal as it goes down. Let's see, it's 80% Merino Superwash. 
10% cashmere and 10% nylon. Uh, like I said, it was about 600 yards. So my top was about $45. Um, it's not that inexpensive, but it was really fun to make. The next top I'm gonna to talk about is my Miserina. And now I was absolutely inspired by the grocery girls. Tracy, Tracy knit this more the most beautiful top that was from Farmer's Daughter. Okay. Blah blah blah. I said it all wrong. Let me start over. And if I have no idea how to edit, because I barely have an idea if this is recording. I will just leave that in. So, starting over, inspired by Tracy of Grocery Girls, uh, I knit the Miserina and by Caitlin Hunter, who has the most addictive knits. If you knit her sweater, you never want to stop. You just want to keep going and see what the yoke does. I'm never bored knitting those amazing sweaters she has. I knit this sweat top. Where'd it go? There it is. I knit this top out of Ranch Romance and Reminisce from The Farmer's Daughter and her special colorway in Spin Cycle Slow Burn. Now I ordered it immediately when I saw Tracy's. I couldn't even, I didn't even hit pause. I just went for it. And look at it, it's amazing. And the amazing part is actually it's the same exact colors, but the Spin Cycle is a little bit different than Tracy's and I love it. It's I'm from the Southwest, so it definitely gives the Southwest vibe. It's perfect. And I, like I said, I couldn't stop. I knit this so quickly. It's a little thicker, I think, than Caitlin's, where it's not, it's definitely a, a denser, thicker fabric. So it was quick. Like I said, I, I used a size eight for the color work and a seven for the main body. I, I'm a very tight knitter. I knit continental, and so... I think I don't have any slack when I'm holding it around my fingers. So I definitely have to usually go up a few needle sizes. I absolutely love this. It's definitely cozy. Like a lot of the yoke sweaters for me, they, den they definitely kind of pull up when I move. But as far as just a showstopper, I love it. My next summer sweater is from Sandness Garn. I you'll get the idea that I get inspired by knitting podcasts. I love knitting podcasts, so I decided to start one. I've been thinking about doing it for years and years and years. I think during the week I even talk to myself about what I would say and share, and then I know it's gonna be a total blooper, so I think I tend to pause and get too shy and not do it. But I'm going for it today, and this is my second take. Wow, my second take. Okay, back to the top. So this is Sandness Garn. And again, backwards, sorry, don't know how to fix it. If it's correct, awesome. This is the cone top and I did use Lena. I didn't even tell you where I was inspired by this. I watched the Knitting Loft podcast and their Instagram lives. I love Dinah and Pam. My son even says, oh, it's Dinah and Pam. Pam when I'm watching it. Um, so thank you ladies, I love it. And so this is my top. I could not tell you the color because I didn't write it down. But I'm pretty sure Pam has the same color and a different top, but the top fits beautifully. I love Lena, it's 53% cotton and it's 33% viscose and 10% linen. And it really does feel great. It drapes nicely. It does not bother my hands at all when I'm knitting with it. And other pure cottons can, even um, some linens actually can, but this does not bother me at all. I knit the lace part accidentally in a five needle. Um, my gauge swatch was in a six and for somehow I just ended up casting on and knitting this whole lace panel in five. I'm kind of downward sloped and narrow on top, but then I like to have more loosely going over the belly. Um, so it worked out well because then I actually changed to six needle for the body and it fits perfect. I forgot to mention what I'm going to try to do is post the fit of these 
on Instagram. So after this video, I'm going to try to take pictures with the tops on and then post them to my Instagram. And my Instagram is at Colorado Knitter. Um, so hopefully you can check me out there. But I love it. It's perfect with jeans. It's perfect with white pants. It feels amazing. And it's awesome. Okay, now you're going to get into my Whipland. And there's no way that I'm going to show you all of them. I have a zillion. And I'm totally comfortable with that. Before, before I get into the whips that I will share today, I wanted to tell you what I'm wearing because clearly forgot. This is the Melange, Melange sweater from Petite Knit. Um, it is in Hedgehog Tweety Noir and it's absolutely perfect. My favorite part is definitely the neckline. It's a, it's a rolled over neck. It's folded over. It's a folded over neck and it's finished inside and it just fits perfectly. I have a hard time with some yoke necks and this is more of a dropped shoulder, um, but drop shoulder and raglan do better for me. But this neck is perfection. I love the neckline and the Tweety Noir is just perfect. Again, we hit September in Colorado, so we're definitely approaching sweater weather. It's nice and cozy today. It's raining and cold outside. Okay, now next to the whips I will share today are the whips that I've been trying to address slowly and get to a finished object. And so I will start with the Alpine Bloom. Now the Alpine Bloom, I have started a long time ago and I was recently just inspired to pick up and try to finish it. Um, my, my good friend in North Carolina at Chapel Hill Knitter, she picked hers up and it's beautiful. And so it gave me the inspiration to kind of get rolling again on this. So what I have here is my Alpine Bloom and this is by Caitlin Hunter. The yarn I used is Linen Quill, which is wonderful. I, if you guys are podcast enthusiasts like I am, you've probably seen the Half and Half Wrap, which is a big Pearl Soho linen quill project that went viral. And I, I have made one of those and accidentally felted it, but I've made some garment tops with it as well. And I love, love, love it. So my blue is vintage Saladin and the gray is oatmeal gray. And it just worked perfectly for this. Now I have about an inch and a half. Let me put my notebook down. An inch and a half left for the rest of the body. So I'm going to have total. So it'll include a half an inch of ribbing. But I love it. Now one thing I will say about knitting this project. To give you a little heads up. Is I love the sleeves. And making the sleeve lace was actually quite quick. And it was fun and easy to, to learn and see the pattern as you were going. When I kitchenered, kitchenered it to the main fabric, that's when I learned some lessons. Um, I've been knitting for 18 years and I have to say that every project I learned something new and that's probably why I'm so obsessed with knitting. But this is where we are. So when I first kitchenered the lace to the main, I had done it too tight, so tight that it kind of pulled and puckered. And so every time I pulled on it, I could feel it trying to move and adjust, but it was just too tight and too stuck. And so I undid it and I re-kitchenered it. And this time I was really careful to make, make sure that my knitting V, so to speak, were similar in the kitcheners so that the, the gauge or the tightness was looking a lot more cohesive all the way up and it feels so much better i'm very happy that i went back it would have really bothered me but this is awesome let me see if i wrote anything else down i think i keep looking in the wrong place i'm gonna have to put a big look at me part on the on the ipad so alpine bloom my main was knit in the five needle a us5 and the color work was in a us6 all right, I think I did it on that one. Now I'm going to move into a gift knit that was an instant cast on when I heard a baby was coming along and I was inspired by Needles at the Ready. Again, I love 
podcasts and I love watching YouTube podcasts of knitters and all the things. So needles at the ready, another favorite of mine. They make me laugh so much that I've actually watched them more than once. And even the taste test cracks me up at night. I watch it and just laugh. So I think it was Kevin who's knitting this sweater. So it inspired me to pick it up because I needed a baby sweater. And it's always easiest when I see somebody else making one. And that's exactly what I look up and just go for it. So this is the Barocco Kirby baby sweater. And I'm knitting the nine month size just because the baby's daddy is seven foot. So just planning ahead. It's nicely in the middle of a row because that's me. I got distracted by something else. But this is one sleeve and this is the Kirby sweater again by Barocco. Barocco yarn, I think it's probably from their yarn. But what I used is Explorer Knits, their DK Superwash. And it's the color is blue spruce and it's actually a hundred percent superwash, which I would like nylon for a baby, but they're going to outgrow it pretty quick. So it's a pretty cutie patootie sweater, I think. And it's not obviously been blocked because it's in the middle of a row. So I have one more sleeve and maybe a few more inches in the body, but not much. So I'll be finished pretty quick. Hopefully going to get this along in about, hmm, two weeks. And so I also have another project that I'll show you at the, a little later in the video that's going to the same baby. On this, I, so I've been kind of liking the, the bamboo needles. They're chow goo. I usually am a metal chow goo person, but sometimes I worry that I'm making too much clicky noise about, with my family. So I do have these on chow goo bamboo and I really like them. I have no problem with them at all. And they're, they're pretty quiet. So this is a size six for the main and then any of the, it's not ribbing, but it's garter is on a four. But look at how pretty the, the little lace is going to be. Nice hole in the underarm and just cutie patootie. And then it has also, I like that you don't have to do the bands separate, but here's the little buttonholes. There's, all, there's three, so I got to find some cute buttons. But this color, well, there's like three things I'm showing you in the similar color. I, I like the color a lot. Oh, I haven't even showed you the bags these things are in. So my Alpine Bloom is in the amazing and famous Hayden Hammer bags. Nice. That, that's dog slobber. I hope you can hear me. I didn't plug in a mic because it kind of had some background noise. It was weird. So hide and hammer bags, always a go-to. I love them. They protect my knitting from nasty car rides. And this one's really fun. I jumped on it when it was available, but it's got the yellow. Some reason I always use the snap instead of unbuckling it. I just always snap it, but I love them. I love this color. Again, same color. My Kirby baby sweater is in this Buku bag. Now, talk about a favorite bag. These Buku bags are zippered, so you could catch your yarn if, if that's a concern. However, it's deep enough that it doesn't do that for me. And what I love the most is having the pockets and two more pockets inside so that I can have all my stuff without so many different little pouches and notions bags inside. So Purell, Thread of Maple, I think it's a go-to bag or something like that, where amazing. I think they have coupon right now, 30% off, you buy three, go get it, Thread of Maple. Thread of Maple. Oh, blue polarized glasses. So, highly recommend Buku. I think I'm going to try to link these things. Don't know how, but I'll try. We'll see if I can even get this uploaded. Ooh, should I just show you the tag? Buku.
I have. I'm gonna show you this because I need to finish it. I need to get motivated and I adore it, but I can't tell you the yarn I used. I bought it at Fancy Tiger Crafts up in Denver and still don't know where to look in the camera, sorry. Um, but I bought it there and I, first of all, the store is amazing. Go to Fancy Tiger Crafts, it's amazing. But I have a tessellated pullover, cause yes, who doesn't want a tessellated vest or pullover? But I don't know the yarn. All I know is that this is from a huge cone, which I have here, of Holst. It's, it's more like a chocolate brown. I don't know if the light is good or bad. I don't know. But I had to do it in the low ball because I'm not coordinating with the cone. So Holst, super soft. Pretty sure Ghost Ranch, Spin Cycle, and Surrey Alpaca from The Farmer's Daughter. Don't know the name, but it's gorgeous. So these are my three colors. Tessellated Pullover from Andrea Maori. And this is it. And I just stopped. And I hate when I do that, but I do it often. I hate it ish because I get super excited about other things I'm doing, but I'm on the front. So this panel right here is the front and this is where it was in the round, but now I'm doing it separated, but this is how it's come out again. Not sure the color I wanted to sit on the other side of the window, but it's a mess over there. You don't want to see it. Again, I'm going to totally get back on this, but it's gorgeous and it's really fun to knit. It takes a long time, but it's fun to see what's happening, to see the outcome. It's fun to feel it. I really like it. And this is in a bag. Tani and Casey, she had a little update with this different kind of bag. Now it has snaps and I, I don't really use the snaps, but I just tie it like kind of like a bunny bag. And then I think you could snap it and then maybe hang it on an armchair or something. But isn't it cute? Okay, now let's see if I have it with me. I've, I've been test knitting for a few people. Um, recently I test knit for Alicia Plummer. And I finished it, which is amazing for me to finish something quickly. I think that's why I kind of like doing a test knit because it motivates me to kind of go for it and realize somebody else out there is looking for a finished project <laughs> from me. And Alicia Plummer, I've had great success with her patterns fitting me well. And so I was excited about it. Her um test knitters the community is awesome they chime in on ravelry threads and they're always so nice and encouraging um i really love the group she creates so what alicia Plummer has made and it should be coming out before rhinebeck um and i know we can do sneak peeks so i'll only show you a little bit but she made this amazing cardigan that she has on instagram posted in a full picture um and it's fast you guys you have to try it it's such a fast knit um and like i said i get distracted so i make lots of random things in between each project and i was able to quick, quickly bust that out i used let's see if i can find it I know I saved the little paper, but I don't know if I see it. I do, I see it. I use nightshades for the mane. And this one is, again, from Fancy Tiger Crafts. And it's Last Call in nightshades. And then I used Daylights um, from Harrisville Designs in Chirp as the color work. And this is my sneak peek. Oh, it's going to be so cool. I can't wait. Now, I haven't steaked it yet. 
hence it's a cardigan, but I am taking a class. I get to go to Knit City in just a week and I can't believe it. This will be my first yarn show, yarn festival, yarn show, classes, in-person classes, um, ever going to anything like this. And I'm nervous, excited, can't wait, don't know what to expect, gonna love it. It's gonna be awesome. So I actually signed up for a Gudrun Johnson steaking class. And so I'm knitting the little sample for her class. And then my hope is to take this along and right after the class, after the show, go to the hotel and go for it and steak it and enjoy it and love it. I did get my buttons. Alicia Plummer recommended this awesome little shop and it's called Twin Mountain Handcrafts. And these are acrylic. They look so cute because they're wood-like, but they won't be a problem when I need to soak it or anything like that. Ugh, sorry about the crinkles. But let's see. This is the first time I take them out of the bag. So the back is like that. And that's the front. And this is what it'll go. Just kind of blend right in. I'm really happy with that choice. Uh, if you can't hear well, let me know in the comments. I'll try to figure out the Whopper mic I have. I don't know. It wasn't working great for me. All right. So let's see. The mentions, Alicia Plummer, the nightshades, daylights, steaking plans, and buttons. The next text knit. Wow. That was not clear. The next test knit I have is for Vera Valamaki, and I, it's over there, and I'm not gonna show too much because um, I didn't ask. I need to ask. So hopefully next time I'll get a little further. She does have a sneak peek also on her Instagram, um, and it's stripey, and again, drop shoulder, which I love. Uh, I, I'm excited about it, and I'm using La Bienna May or worsted which you can't go wrong it's beautiful yarn okay all right this is a little tangent a little like me and totally not unusual but a while back I saw this adorable quilt coat Oh my gosh, don't know the designer right now. I do know that the knitting place in New York, again, Pam and Dino, have a class, a Zoom class, so we can all join in if we want to, um, about this cardigan. And it it's just like a quilted coat, a quilted cardigan. And I could find it. Where's my phone? I'll just have to link it below. I think below linked. Okay, so this is it. Look at how cute. So you make these little patches, these little squares. And I cast this on before the knitting place had talked about it because I saw it on Ravelry and I could not resist. And it's total Arizona, total Southwest. I can't even. Now, I'll tell you, I'm not sure I'm doing these right. I, I like the result, but they're not easy. The floats are forever. So sometimes I tried the jacquard laddering and sometimes I, did I not? I, this one has the laddering even more. And sometimes I just, carried them. So this is the last one I did and there, I only did a little bit of laddering and then I was like, screw it, just carry the float. So they're really long floats. What I'm using is Holst, super soft. I have so many just little balls of colors. Sometimes Holst, their website where their main distributor abroad is, they have great discounts. So I have a lot of fun little colors. 
So I actually held it double. This one is two different burgundies held double. This one's kind of a pale blue and a pale oatmeal held together. And it's coming out awesome. As I go along, I'll, wow, those glasses are really blue, sorry. As I go along, I will give you more information about it. I'm using a size five needle. That's kind of where I got the right size of a square. It kind of tells you where, what size you need a finished, the finished square to be. So I only have like a seven million more squares, but you know, every now and then I might do a square. Okay, so now this is a little off the top subject of knitting, a little tangent for me, um, but I used to sew a whole lot more. When COVID hit, it was harder for me to sew because it took so much space and I had all three boys home doing school. Uh, I am not good at homeschooling. Uh, that is not my gift. Uh, I think it's amazing and I love that the gift is out there, but I don't have that gift. But my youngest was doing an online program. So he was in here, the sewing room, even though I mostly knit in the sewing room, um, but we shared the space together so he could concentrate. Um, so I kind of stopped sewing for a good chunk of time. But as I mentioned, that little baby came along. And so, uh, mama of the baby loves to thrift sh shop and likes secondhand and is very wonderful about um, making sure she's appreciating clothes and garments and not just tossing them. And so I did buy this fabric secondhand in honor of her. Um, I actually found it on Poshmark, which I try to sell some things because we always feel like we're cluttered and blessed and cluttered. Um, but I love this fabric. I've always loved this fabric, but I have three sons, so I didn't have a need for this fabric until this baby girl came along. And so I bought a layer cake with the fabric Pips. And it's a Moda fabrics. And so I am using the Quilt As You Go Made Modern Book because I have a, a normal size sewing machine, so I didn't want to have to send it out to get quilted. And uh, so this is where I'm at. So what you do is you quilt each square separately, so you can kind of see it has the batting. No backing, but batting. And then you sew each little square that you've already quilted together. And so it comes out really cute. And these are the the cute little girls and she has a big sister and so my hope is that they use this for play forts picnics messes car rides all of the above but i have about three more rows to go um it's pretty close though so hopefully that little barocco kirby sweater and this quilt will go to this happy home And the quilt itself on, in that book, which I recommend, it's really good. Um, I do like Quilt As You Go because sometimes it gets overwhelming to figure out where to send it, where to get it quilted. It gets huge and the piecing is so fun, but the quilting a little bit monotonous. And with my personality that has ADD and wants to do all the things all at the same time, doing a square, putting it down it works perfectly for me but the quilt's name itself is called rainy days quilt um and they they live in washington so rainy let's see audible 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 oh i need to find my phone one second found it. Okay, so I 
like I said, I have a St. Bernard and he's huge, slow and loving. But when we take our morning walks, it's very slow. And so I need to listen to Audible or do something along the way. And so the books that I wanted to say I just finished because they're amazing and I recommend them are one, The Tattooist of Oswich. And the next one that I really enjoyed, like enjoyed through and through, again, having a little bit of focus issues. I, it's hard for me to kind of really get into the storyline and really get into the book. This one kept me into it the whole time. Um, and it's this one, The Family Upstairs. It was really entertaining and I liked the narrator. It was good. I already lost my page in my notebook. Okay, podcasts, podcasts, podcasts. I listen to them all, I watch them all, I do laundry, I do dishes, I cook, I listen to them, love them. I went to Costco yesterday listening to Grocery Girls and they just make me laugh. Um, both hilarious. I don't know. I don't, I think I'll get starstruck and nervous when I see them in Knit City, but I hope to get a little picture with them. My boys even know them. One time, years, I was during COVID, they gave me a shout out to Hey Colorado, and I was so excited. And I replayed it for the boys to listen to, which was pretty funny. Um, so Grocery Girls, yes, I love them. And needles at the ready, again, crack me up. I can't even, I feel like they're just so open and normal and funny and welcoming and like I wanna just hang out and laugh. And so sometimes I feel weird like a little stalker because I feel like I know these people but they have no clue who I am. So I decided to do this podcast to say, hey, not a stalker. I just want to hang out with everybody and love seeing everyone's projects and happiness and joy in yarn and making. And I don't know, this is just so fun. I have been knitting for 18 years since my oldest was a baby. And I still love it and get so excited to see what everyone's making, what everyone's doing. Um, so hopefully this works out and you guys welcome me into podcast land. Okay, so I talked a little bit about some of the acquisitions. One, making journal. The second one I just recently got was after I watched Candace's Farmer's Daughters podcast again. Love her. Um, I always loved Pom Pom and... Lina and all the beautiful, beautiful publications. And I wasn't totally sure about um, ordering a book because eh, we got a lot of stuff going on here. And so when I saw Pom Pom had digital option, I jumped on it because I can't with the socks in Pom Pom. I don't know if I could even find them for you, but I, if you guys look at the most recent Pom Pom, with Candace as the editor, there's socks that look just like my quilt coat patches. And I have to, I have to make them. And so I definitely ordered that. And I love the digital version because I actually use good notes um, to, to open up all my patterns. I have the easiest time with that. I used to always use paper because I like to write it, but it was just getting confusing and paper everywhere and I just, it does not work when you're not a monogamous, monogamous knitter. It just, eh, it gets a little confusing, but good notes really works for me. And I think it's because it's like a paper that you can put your slash marks and everything on. Um, I really like it. So then I opened Pom Pom on that and I can just always use it. If I had the magazine, which is gorgeous, I would still probably use good notes for it. Knit City was a big, big whopper purchase. Um, I 
has had major FOMO for fiber flock. Flock fiber? Flock fiber. Festival. Yeah, that. And I love Shop La Mercerie. And I love the Northwest. Uh, my fa husband's family is from there, so I'm very familiar. Um, and honestly, I should have gone. I should have just gone. And so right after that, the city popped up on my Instagram feed and I did it. I went for it and said, I'm going. And my sons were so happy for me because I've never done anything like that. Um, and my husband obviously is so supportive. Uh, so I'll be at Knit City, Vancouver, and I'm going to take two classes. I decided to take um, the sticking class, and then I'm going to take um, how to cut into sock tubes. I don't have a knitting, like the circular machine, um, but oftentimes I'm at kids' sporting events or waiting in car line, carpool line, and sometimes I don't have a mindless knit where I'm knitting the body, but I can always have a little sock tube going. I used to make, I make a million socks, so that's not the issue, but the issue is I make a lot of sock legs, and so I have legs, and then heel comes along, and I pause, and then I get another skein, and I knit the leg, heel comes along and I pause. And so I thought, well, maybe if I could just make tubes and learn how to cut in the heel, toe and cuff and do that another time and just have the tube where it's not just the leg waiting for me to make the heel. It sounds weird because it's kind of the same, but a tube, it can go forever versus the leg and it's on the needles, the leg on the needles, leg on the needles. Don't know how it works up there. The sticking class was amazing because I had signed up for Alicia Plummer's test knit. Never have I steaked, so I have no idea really how that works. I love woolly wool yarn, so that's not an issue because that's my favorite yarn anyways, and I feel like I could really just cut it and <laughs> it would work but I wanted to know the ins and outs before I jumped in. And so it really worked out and Gundren Johnson's patterns are stunning. I love color work. Um, I'm excited for her new book. So I'm, I'm super pumped about that. Super pumped. The Buku pouch was the other thing I showed you along the way and I just recently got that. She's an amazing maker, amazing. But that one with all the pockets already in there is something I really like. Oh, this is what my FOMO created, a monster. Well, I, when I had the fiber flock, FOMO, flock fiber, I don't know why I keep saying that backwards, flock fiber festival FOMO. I got on immediately and saw all the people vending and I went to their websites and Instagram and I ordered these cutie patooties Pacific Knit Company deck of cards. I got the basic doodle and then the winter doodle. Super cool. I think right now they're having a doodle along, a doodle make along. So check out their Instagram. I think it's just Pacific Knit Co. Okay. I didn't know I could do this for 43 minutes. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I hopefully I can get this downloaded and you can hear me and the lighting is not horrendous. Um, but it was really fun. I can't wait to podcast again and share more of my crazy amounts of whips, hopefully some FOs, and maybe I'll see you in Knit City. Thanks again, again, at Colorado Knitter, and my name is Maddie. Here goes my face. <laughs>